I'm gonna ask everybody, I know it's hot, I know it's aggravating sometimes being in the heat. I'm gonna ask, this is an important press conference. This is about somebody's life. This is Jose, who's right now looking at manslaughter charges. So I'm gonna ask everybody just to calm down for a minute. And we're going to, um, before we start, I'm going to ask Reverend Diaz to start with a prayer. I think we need a prayer. I know it's not yes. on the agenda, but I think we need to start with a prayer. So Amen. I'm going to ask yes. Reverend Amen. Diaz Amen. to come and do a Amen. prayer. Amen. Because I think Where's the devil sometimes is family. Yes. Reverend Señor, delante tu presencia venimos en este momento, dándote a ti toda la gloria, dándote a ti toda la honra, pidiéndote, Padre Amado, que lo que estamos haciendo sea aprobado por ti. Que mire, Señor, el corazón de fiscal Alvin Brad, que lo toque, Padre Amado. Que estos cargos sean desestimados porque tu hijo, José Alba, solamente estaba defendiendo. Y aquí acudimos, Señor, para que tú, tú que conoces los corazones, tú que conoces, Señor, todas las intenciones que tú toques, Padre Amado, y que podamos tener un día feliz, una vida feliz, y que el Señor Alba pueda vivir felizmente como antes estaba con su familia. A ti sea la gloria, a ti sea la honra, te lo pedimos en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. So, now I feel the peace of God. So, we're going to start the press conference. Before everything, I just want, before I introduce my counterpart, who's going to be emceeing today, I just want to explain that I'm the chairman of the National Association of Hispanic Chamber. Why I'm involved? Because my grandfather was head of the Bodega Association in the 1950s, was the first Puerto Rican Bodega. This is important. At that time, he used to walk around with a gun. We don't want those times in the 1950s and 60s. So today, this is important. We have the restaurants, the supermarkets, all our chambers, the Dominican chambers, all the chambers together as one voice. This is not about who's here or who's not here. This is about somebody's life that's looking at manslaughter charges, that all he did is self-defense. So what I do want to say before I introduce Francisco is that the chamber, I want to say whoever's going to speak, I know we have, this is not political. So I got Republican Democrats here. So they're going to say things that the chamber and the NSA does not support. I know I got Nelson here. I respect Nelson as a political leader for the supermarket. When I went to Jose Frio about the numbers in the bodegas, with bodegas in the Bronx, but I always call Nelson and say, hey, is it right? There is crime. Because I respect Nelson because he's a leader. Today, it's not about Democrat or Republican. I know this is the first time we get both Democrat and Republican together with the chambers. Because this is important. This is somebody's life. Esto es la vida de alguien. Y tenemos los republicanos, los democráticos acá. Y como líderes, necesitamos la ayuda the district attorney, but we're not gonna ask, I'm saying it in front of the assemblywoman and Reverend Diaz, personally under the chambers, and Nelson will verify this, we're not asking for the DA's resignation right now. Why? Because why he, why I'm gonna why say not? why, wait. Why not? Wait, why not? wait, give me a chance please. I'm directing this, please, please, please. We're not asking, it's because we are negotiating with the DA right now. It's important about Jose. This is not about, you know, we know that he was unfairly charged. We know that issue, and we're gonna discuss that. But right now, we're not here for politics. We have the family of Jose here. We ask people, they're in trauma right now because of what happened. We ask everybody to be sensitive. We ask the press to be sensitive. This, is, this could have been one of your family members. We ask you to be sensitive and we will answer all questions. The family will not answer any questions. Thank you. So right now I want Francisco to start it off, who's the one that put his house up, that a lot of leaders, leaders will not do. As I am the national chairman. I see leaders, leaders from all around the United States that are Hispanic chamber presidents and business on. This man put his house up for the bail. So I'm gonna ask Francisco to speak. First, Francisco, please. And he's emceeing with me. Well, I just want, first I want to thank all of you for being here and say thanks to all of um, the organization. Identify okay, my name is Francisco Martes. I'm the president and founders of Bodegas Association. We all are here 
to ask for justice. Yeah. What happened to, uh, oh, to Jose could have to anyone. So I want to thank all the organizations, the NSA, um, Yemeni's organization, the restaurant association, the, restaurant association, the Dominican chambers, all the chambers are here. I want the to thank all, 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 all of the chambers. I want to I want to thank all of them for being here. So mainly what we ask is justice for Jose Alba. A man that has just been working for over 35 years in New York City in, in the bodegas. We are now facing a lot of problems, a lot of public safety uh, problems. And when we come to uh, a situation like Jose is now, um, he's sending a room messenger, like if we defend ourselves, then we're gonna be in jail. That's not what we want. We want um, public safety. We want justice serving to equal to everyone. That's what we want. That's what we're asking here to the DA to drop the charge in Jose, um, the murder charge. He was on self-defense. So we, we believe- Drop the charge! 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 To have him back and a lot of um, officers to see what we, uh, if we can get us our uh, uh, charge dropped. So that's what we want. We don't want no politicals, we just want justice for everyone. We are here to ask for the follow we need, that is uh, public safety. And everyone who supports public safety, we work on. And that's what we want to work. We as a bodegas, a small business, supermarket, restaurant, that's what we need, to have a public safety. Okay, eh, mi nombre es Francisco Marte, de la Asociación de Bodegueros y Pequeños Comerciantes. Estamos todos aquí hoy para pedir justicia por José. Queremos darle las gracias a la Asociación de Supermercados, a la Asociación um, Llama Gemini, a los restaurantes, a la Cámara de Comercio Dominicana con Elida. Eh, queremos darle las gracias al Reverendo Díaz que ha estado apoyándonos y a un grupo inmenso de personas que han venido José a apoyarnos siempre. José ama self-defense. José ama self-defense. José ama self-defense. José ama self-defense. Por José Alba y por todos los comerciantes que estamos siendo víctimas de la violencia. Nosotros eh, entendemos que los cargos deben tumbársele a José porque es un mensaje equivocado que le mandan a los delincuentes de que pueden atacar a los comerciantes y que los comerciantes entonces vamos a ser castigados si nos defendemos. Así que vamos a unirnos todos y a pedir por la seguridad pública. Eso es lo que queremos. Gracias. Okay. So first, 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 I would like to have one of our Dominican leaders in the community, Assemblywoman. There's a lot of Hispanic politicians who are afraid to be at this press conference because they thought we were going to ask for the resignation of the DA. We're not. So we have one champion that came, no matter what, political or not political, having Republicans here, she doesn't care because she cares about the community of the bodegas in the Bronx. So I'm going to ask the Assemblywoman to say a couple of words first. Assemblywoman? The whole city. And the whole city. The whole city. The whole city. The whole city, not just the Bronx. Everything. Good afternoon. I am a Sunday member of the Bronx Catapia, but I'm here uh, from the 86 Standard Kids in the Bronx. But I'm here today as a mother, as an immigrant, as a community leader in my community for more than 30 years, as one that has been fighting for small businesses in my community for many years. And as one that understand that our small businesses are the ones who actually are carrying our community through this pandemic. They were the ones that were closed, but they were the ones that stayed in our community. They are the ones that actually employ half of our community members. So this, this is the capacity that I am here today. And I believe that we are standing here because we want justice. But I mean, we're asking for justice in preemptively before all the process and the due process that had to go, that had to pass, has passed. We know that the district attorney, Alvin Bragg, is doing that process. We also know, and this is important, 
we also know that the video that came out from that tragedy, because it was a tragedy in our community, the, the video that came out from that is self-explanatory. It is the biggest evidence that, that there is in this case, in this tragedy. That's why I'm confident that the district attorney knows, knows that the victim in this tragedy was Jose Alba. He was the one that was working behind the counter. He was the one who was attacked behind the counter. He was the one who was doing this his job for 35 years. So we know that that's what's going to come to light. We are just here letting everybody know that we, that we stand together. We stand together with Jose Alba and the justice that had to come to his family and to our community. Yo soy Judelka uh, Tapia, soy la asambleísta del Distrito 86 en el Condado del Bronx. Pero yo no estoy aquí en esa capacidad, yo estoy en la capacidad de madre, de inmigrante, que no nació en este país, pero que le ha servido a este país por más de 30 años. Yo estoy aquí como una líder de mi comunidad eh, que ha luchado por los pequeños nego negocios porque entiendo, entiendo que los pequeños negocios son los que mantienen a nuestras comunidades a, 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 encima del agua. Pero haz algo para José. Encima del agua. Para José, y, no para José. Y, y, y la, la razón, y, y hay una evidencia una evidencia específica en esta tragedia que ha pasado eh, aquí en esta ciudad. Y es el video que salió probando que el señor José Alba es la víctima en esta tragedia, que él fue el que fue realmente atacado y que él solamente se defendió porque él tiene una familia que él tiene que cuidar. Porque él ha estado en este país por 35 años trabajando, luchando. ¡José Alba se defendió! 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 ¡José We are not calling for his resignation, we are calling for, due, for the due process that has to pass in this time. Nosotros no estamos llamando para la resignación del señor del José José Okay, but we're trying to do a press conference. I'm going to save everything for the end, please, because we got a lot of people that need to speak, and we need to show that Hispanic Okay. Let's make it short and sweet. You want to come to front and do it? I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. Reverend Diaz. 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 Reverend Diaz.
cuando peina la gobernadora, cuando peina la gobernadora, Katy Joko. No lo queremos, Que no es ahora que están pidiendo la renuncia, que hace desde que entró, se le está pidiendo que ella despida a Alvin Brack por el abuso que tiene, por la falta de consideración a nuestra comunidad. Y en este caso de José Alba, no ha probado. Ese hombre se tiene que ir ya. También, también quiero felicitar al señor Frank, Ma, Frank Francisco Marte. Porque él fue el primero que fue allá a poner su dinero y a sacarlo. Quiero felicitar a siete asambles, concejales blancos. Siete concejales blancos, no hispanos, que salieron en defensa de Francisco de, de José Alba. Quiero felicitar al alcalde que salió en defensa de Francisco Alba, el liderato hispano de un cobarde que no se atreve ni a pedirle la renuncia a alguien ya. Yo creo que es una cobardía que estamos aquí para pedir respeto ya, que se termine. I'm saying that even though I was asked not to speak politics, this is not politics. This is abuse against our community. This is abuse of power. This is not politics. And I've been bragged since he took office. There are many that have been asking the governor to fire him. And, to, and with this action, I'm, I cannot stand here and say that I'm not going to ask for his resignation. Thank you very yes, much. I'm Thank asking you, the governor that it's about time to fire this guy. We are not supposed to be here. That's right, Why are we here? That's right. Are we here because uh, an abuse against our community has been committed? Who is committing that abuse? I've been brought. So stop, stop pandering. Stop saying, I know. Yes. Yes. So he doesn't deserve to be there. Muchas gracias. At this moment, one of the leaders of the city council, Bob, come in and speak. And then we're going to have Nelson from the Supermarket Association, and Francisco's going to introduce the other leadership. All right, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Frank. And uh, Francisco, thank you so much for putting up your house. Your bail, uh, Mr. Alba House. Uh, that was unbelievable. I want to thank you for that. And I stand with you and I'm, as part of the. Uh, Drop the charges! 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 The Common Sense Caucus stands with Mr. Alba. He was doing his job, by the way. And Mr. Austin Simon comes in, a man with 26 arrests, prior arrests. Do the right thing, Bob. Do the right thing. Not a good guy. And when you walk behind the counter, again, and you push someone, and then you try to choke him, it's in with... In, in his right, at Mr. Alba defended himself. What are we talking about? He was defending himself. And I served, I served with uh, Reverend Luther Diaz in the council. And we sat next to each other in the back row, and he always told it like it was. And he did it today. I thank him. Alvin Bragg needs to go. That's right. Fire Alvin Bragg! Fire Alvin Bragg! He wouldn't be standing here. If Alvin, we wouldn't be standing here yes, if, sir. if yes, Alvin sir. Bragg did the right thing. He consistently has done the wrong thing since he took office seven months ago, barely yes, seven months ago. Listen to what he said he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't prosecute. Resisting arrest, trespassing, driving without a license, and other laws that routinely criminals get arrested for. Even knife point robbery he wouldn't uh, prosecute. Burglary, weapons possession. Again, Alvin Bragg. Gotta go. Gotta go. Has to go. I've he said it a million go. times. If the governor doesn't remove him, then she has to go. Again, this is this is uh, the bending of a bodega worker who's doing his job, hardworking immigrant. He was doing his job, and he was defending himself. Any one of us here would have defended done the same thing, and the same thing as Mr. Alvin done. Yes, sir.
Even the mayor would have done the same thing. Yes, sir. And and please don't tell elected officials not to say something. Because that's very, very obvious. So I would like to introduce our counterpart representing the supermarkets because we talk about crime in the bodegas. We have the restaurants, supermarkets, and the local Hispanic chambers that represent the membership. And you're going to hear from a great leader and friend, Nelson. Nelson, I'm going to ask him to come in and say a couple of words on behalf of the supermarkets. Thank you very much, Frank. On behalf of the 600 supermarkets that are scattered to the five months of the world, the let's say that we are behind Jose Alba. I will tell you this, I will tell you this, that we have met through Zoom conference with every single DA in the counties of Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Manhattan. We met before this strategy. We forewarned this tragedy. We told Mr. Bragg this was going to happen. You had to stop the violence. We warned them. We pleaded with them. They didn't listen. And now we have what we have. I don't think nobody here is asking for vigilante justice. We don't want that. What we want is justice. We want justice for Mr. Albas. And Mr. Bragg, please take your head out of the sand and stop protecting criminals and protect law-abiding citizens. That's right. En nombre de nuestra prestigiosa Asociación Nacional de Supermercados, queremos darle nuestro respaldo, respaldo incondicional a la Asociación de Bodegueros, nuestros conciudadanos, pedir, pedir el descargo de José Alba y dejarle saber a las autoridades que lo que sucedió en una bodega puede y seguirá sucediendo en los supermercados, puede suceder en la farmacia, puede eh, suceder en los sí, restaurantes, sí. en las estaciones de gasolina. Así como nos declararon esenciales en este momento crítico de la pandemia, igual necesitamos esencial protección en nuestros negocios. Apoyamos a José Alba, apoyamos a nuestros hermanos de la Asociación de Bodegueros y queremos justicia a través de la ley. Muchísimas gracias, la prestigiosa Asociación Nacional de Supermercados. Justicia para José Alba. Justicia para José Alba. Justicia para José Alba. I would like to introduce a former detective of the NYPD, former detective, president of the Latino Restaurant Association. I would like to have Jeffrey come say a couple of words, and then we're going to have the council people speak and my counterpart from the Dominican Chamber. Hello, thank you all for coming. Uh, obviously, we, get, we stand here in solidarity with um, uh, Frank Monte uh, from the Bodega Association and this tragic events that happened uh, with Mr. Alba. You know, um, I'm going to say a famous quote that I think many of you have heard before. Uh, a DA can get a uh, grand jury to indict a ham sandwich. And that would be tragic in this case. Um, for Mr. Alba to be going to a possible trial for defending himself would be very sad, very tragic, not only for him and for his family, but for everybody in this industry, whether it's bodegueros, supermarket owners, restaurant owners, who deal with these type of situations on a daily basis, day in and day out. So it would be very tragic, and we plead upon uh, DA Bragg to reconsider and really look at the evidence here and say, you know what? This cannot go to a grand jury because imagine being indicted for this, for defending yourself, for doing your job. That would be very sad. And as a former detective, um, you know, uh, it, it would it, it would really hurt to see a hardworking man like this be put in this situation. Obviamente, soy Jeffrey García, soy presidente de la Asociación de Restaurantes Latinos aquí de Nueva York, y estoy aquí en solidaridad con mi amigo, mi hermano. Frank Mante y la familia Alba, que da mucha pena que están en este, pasando por este proceso. Hay un, eh, un dicho muy famoso en la ley que 
el DA puede eh, darle a, a, a un gran jurado eh, cualquier evidencia y pueden eh, indictar un ham sandwich. Un muerto, eso, fuera, un muerto, un muerto. eso fuera una tragedia en este caso. El señor Alba no debiera estar en esta posición. Le pedimos al, eh, al District Attorney Alvin Bragg que reconsidere su situación, vea la evidencia y entienda que este señor está haciendo su trabajo en su comunidad, su, ayuda a su comunidad y no debiera estar en esta situación. Y estoy con ustedes y con su familia. Muchas gracias. I'm going to ask the councilwoman to come here and say a couple of words. We got to clean that out. We got to bring back law and order. Justicia, Pablo. Justicia. We have to bring back law and order. Law and order. She's right. She's right. Second Amendment in New York. That would be fine. Listen to what the lady say. Talking common sense. She's not talking politics. She's not talking Republican. She's not talking Democrat. She's talking common sense. Thank you. Let me speak for three minutes, too. Okay, we'll have you come please. down. Please. please. We'll have you come please. down. I get on my knees. Okay. Let me speak. I'll let you speak. My name is Joanne Ariola. I am the council Thank member you. for the 32nd Thank Council you. District, the home of many small word. businesses and bodegas. When Alvin Bragg was first elected and put out the memorandum that our my, my colleague from the Common Sense Caucus read to you earlier, we knew that this was inevitable. That's why we called for his removal back when he first put out that memorandum. This, this person, Jose Alba, is double victim. He is a victim of the injustice system that's being led by District Attorney Alvin Bragg. Alvin Bragg believes he is a defense attorney and not a prosecutor. Alvin Bragg allowed a man who was attacked by someone much younger and his life was in danger and it was all on video camera surveillance to be arrested and his own perpetrator who stabbed Mr. Alba to go free. So we cannot stand here and say that we have to work with Alvin Bragg. Alvin Bragg has made it clear that he protects criminals and he does not protect law-abiding citizens. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. Call him out. Call him out. We are here to speak for all the people here and everyone watching until Governor Hochul recalls District Attorney Bragg, we are going to see more and more innocent people be arrested. Why? Because the message is criminal. You can go into the store, the bodega, the, the food store, and you can attack whoever works there, and nothing is going to happen to you. I say, not in this city, not under our watch. Alvin Bragg has to go. And as my colleague Rob Holden said, if Governor Hochul will not recall him, then we have to recall her. Francisco is going to introduce some of our leaders, and then I'll continue elected officials. Thank you, Joanne. Well, let me say something. Um, before I introduce um, my colleague from the Yemenis um, organization, um, if the DA doesn't start to prosecute the child lifting, the same thing that happened, it's gonna keep happening. We need the child lifting to be prosecuted. Uh, now I'm gonna introduce uh, my colleague from the Yemenis organization that they are suffering the same situation that we are. We all are bodegueros. Thank you, Frank. Salam everyone. My name is Yusef Bubarez from the Yemeni American Merchants Association. We represent 5,000 Yemeni American owned businesses in New York City that are suffering the same fate and even worse. We're here to stand for Jose Alba to get the charges dropped because this could be any one of the 5,000 Yemeni American owned bodegas and any other ethnicities bodegas who can't protect themselves. Just last year in October 2021, Ahmed Al Muneke, a Yemeni American uh, bodega worker, was stabbed to death defending his bodega. Amen. It took seven months 
to get the person who stabbed him seven months and they're still deciding what the charge Why? Why? Jose Alba defended himself and was immediately charged for murder. You see the difference in how they react the people who defend themselves behind the counter and in front of the counter. There's an unwritten rule in our business. Behind the counter is invite only. Even if you're coming to help them, it's invite That's only. Right. Once you step behind there, the fate is yours. It's self-defense. We're asking for a renewed investment into safety for our bodega owners. We're essential workers. We work throughout the pandemic, and this is how we're being repaid. It's unacceptable. We need things to change. That's right. Thank you. That's right. Thank, Thank, right. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have, before we continue, because a lot of people speak, I'm going to ask everybody to be very very short, I'm gonna cut people off, I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna ask our attorney who pro bono came in to represent the chambers on what the legal issue is, because a lot of people sometimes speak and they're not lawyers. So we wanted a lawyer to talk about the issue, what's going on. I'm gonna ask, and he'll introduce himself. Thank you, I'll keep it very, very short. Uh, my name is Jason Goldman. I've been advising the chamber members as much as possible. Um, everything's already been said. Bodegas are the fabric of New York City. Jose Alba is the American dream, and now he's being prosecuted for murder. And it's unfortunate that it took this and many other people to shed light on the fact that he's being held on Rikers Island and languishing there. A lot of people don't have that spotlight. He was languishing there, and now he's out because enough pressure was put on. The case has not been indicted. We hope that it remains that way. No one here is advocating that a life should have been lost that night, but they are advocating that another life should not be lost. Jose Alba's liberty and his life should not be stripped from him. He had to make a quick decision whether he was going to be carried by six or judged by 12 at a future trial. Yeah. And we hope that it doesn't even get that far. So I will continue to advise the chamber members. We will work. We will work with Mr. Bragg because we want this case dismissed without going to a trial. But make no mistake, if it does, we will be ready. We will ask for a quick trial and Jose Alba will be acquitted. Thank you. Also, I want to make an announcement that next Friday we have a meeting, all the leaders that are here with the attorney, I'm gonna ask you to come here, with the attorney. So we're gonna have a meeting, Nelson, with the DA, the Restaurant Association, the Bronx Hispanic Chamber, with Francisco leadership. We're gonna meet with the DA, and he's gonna be there to make sure that Jose is not taking advantage, because we feel he has been. So I'm gonna ask the councilwoman to come here to say a couple of words. Thank you. And here we are at City Hall steps, and why are we here? I'm here, and I'm here with my colleagues of City Council. I am Vicky Maladino, City Council District 19, Northeast Queens. But I, I stand here with you united to call for Alvin Bragg's resignation. There is no negotiation here. That's right. Absolutely right. none. When this man came into office, ask yourselves, find out, do a little research, find out how many votes it took to get this disaster in the DAC here yes. in the borough of Manhattan. Yes. Nobody came out and voted. Now, we want change, we want justice. Justice for those that are brave enough to get behind this mic today and call it out for what it really That's is. Right, and what it really is is a miscarriage of justice. Absolutely. They brought in Jose Alvarez on $500,000 bail. $500,000. They reduced it to 250,000. Are you kidding me? When we got turnstile justice, people walk away before the paperwork is even done with zero bail. This man is being hung out to dry. We won't allow that to happen. Drop the damn charges. No. Free Jose no. Alba. Office. 
Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Mickey. Thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna ask. I know we got the councilman here, Diego. But I wanted to say a couple of words. He doesn't want to say, but thank you for coming. Do you want to say some words, please? We'll go for it. Um, thank you. You know, uh, yeah, I'm wearing like three layers, like uh, council material. So, uh, it's hot. So yeah, it's hot. Following Vicky Paladino is not an easy job. My name is Colin Yeager. I represent the 44th district in the greatest place in the world, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I represent the neighborhoods of Borough Park, Midwood, Bensonhurst, Gravesend, Kensington, some places you may have heard of. Uh, DA's job is to follow the truth wherever it takes it. And, and when at the beginning of a case, when you don't know the facts, you have to trust. But this was so simple. There was a video. The video makes very clear what happened. And Article 35 of New York State Penal Law makes it very clear what Mr. Alba's responsibility was. It was to defend himself. Self-defense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Self-defense is justifiable and not criminal. Not my words, that's the state law. So there is no way, there is no way that a reasonable, truth-seeking prosecutor has criminal charges pending against Jose Alba. No way, if you are a reasonable, truth-seeking prosecutor. And that's what we have today. The conundrum of what do we have in New York City, what do we have going forward? Do we have a prosecutor who's going to stand with the victims of crime or with the perpetrators of crime? Perpetrators. And right now, right now, it doesn't look like the DA of New York County is standing with the victims of crime. That's what we're here to talk about. That's what we're here to change. So Jose Alba, Jose, the charges against Jose Alba must be dismissed. They have to be dismissed. There is no reason whatsoever under the laws of this state that they are still pending. That's what we want the district attorney to do, and anything short of that is a miscarriage of justice. He's been charged. Drop the charges! 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 I want to ask for one minute. I want to introduce one of our leaders that's coming to speak also now. I am Italian Sergeant Johnny Nunez. I'm not a politician. But, but he's one more leader, said, Latino leader. Everything is politics. But I can say that I, I just retired from the police department 23 years. I'm not an attorney, but I was a law instructor for five years. And the last 15 years, I'm an executive trainer for sergeants, lieutenants, and captains. Now, uh, I'm not going to repeat Article 35. Obviously, you're an attorney. So what, I'm, I'm just going to quickly, this, I'm going to say these Spanish first. Maybe, wait, from the Hispanic community, that is listen. Para nuestra comunidad hispana, que van a estar viendo esta conferencia de prensa. Mira, I'm going to say, why this is happening, a little framework of why it's happening, okay? What is causing, I'm gonna speak about two paradigms that the city needs to decide where we're gonna go and how to fix it. And then at the end, one needs to matter, happen immediately. So, mire, hay dos enfoques. La ciudad de Nueva York tiene que decidirse entre diferentes paradigmas. Existe un paradigma de retórica política, de percepción, de intención, pero hay, una, hay un paradigma de la realidad y de efectividad. ¿De qué estamos hablando? La percepción dice, bueno, El problema es las armas, vamos a controlar las armas. La otra realidad es que es controlar los criminales. So, son dos, dos paradigmas totalmente diferentes. Se habla de entrenar a los policías, no, vamos a entrenar a los padres, a buscarlos, a buscarlos por su responsabilidad con su hijo. Ok, no se trata de quitarle el a los policías, sino más. Por el tiempo, ¿qué está pasando? So, I'll, I'll Miren, tenemos en Nueva York un caos que yo lo denomino como la ecuación imperfecta de un desastre. Yo soy profesor de matemática también. En una ecuación tiene variables a la izquierda y variables a la derecha. Si usted manipula las variables a la izquierda, va a alterar los resultados. Esas variables son la serie de reformas que se pasaron en enero 1 del 20, ley de aframa, el sindicato que le ataron la mano al policía. Aparte de eso, la, la ley tiraron todo el mundo para la calle. Entonces, ¿cuál es el resultado? Yo predije este aumento en crimen. Como también predije el éxodo de policía que se está dando, como yo, que se está retirando a raíz de los mandatos de la vacuna. Y por último, una falsa narrativa que se ha vendido desde la policía rápida. Entonces, ¿qué debemos hacer? Debemos retornar, debemos abolir, o por lo menos modificar la, eh, Berry, con la ley de reforma inmediatamente. Tenemos que hacer eso. Tenemos que dejar de la policía no es, Porque no hemos cometido antes cero tolerancia, ahora es sobre tolerancia 100%. Ventanas rotas que funcionó para apoyar la policía. Ahora, ¿cómo la apoyamos? Lo apoyamos 
dándole esas herramientas legales para trabajar. Y por último, ¿qué tenemos que hacer en este momento de manera inmediata? Pedimos dos cosas que nos escuché aquí. De manera inmediata, le pedimos a la Bright que inmediatamente, de manera contundente, descargue de toda penalidad criminal total al señor José Alba que lo ponga en libertad. Y número uno, a largo plazo, quizás será el próximo gobernador que lo va a destituir de ese cargo. Muchas gracias. So, we got two more. Please don't leave the press because we have questions and we have statements that we want to give. So, I'm going to ask um, one, one of the supermarket leaders from the NSA. To Good afternoon. My name is Carlos Collado. I am Jose Alba. That's my other name. Today, we're all Jose Alba. We've all been in situations just like him. And what, what, what does this crooked justice system wants us to do? Just wait there and get killed? And then if that happens, it's just another new story? No, we're here for justice. Justice and bail reform. I was on Good Day New York yesterday talking about this because we've had countless situations uh, very similar to Mr. Jose Alvas. And again, it got, it, it became on steroids right after bail reform. Bail reform has hurt every working class citizen. And until everyone realizes that, we're in for a big surprise and a criminal wave. So we need to change it, change it. Joe Pinion here, Republican nominee for U.S. Senate uh, against Chuck Schumer here in the state of New York. But again, not here to make a political uh, plea, but an actual moral, actual indication of where we need to be. And Jose Alba has been victimized twice now. First, he was assaulted. First, he was forced to fight for his life. Now he is being forced to fight for his freedom. And so what are you talking about in a nation where the preamble to our Constitution says, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense. Where is the justice? and taking a senior citizen going about his day at work, forced to kill another man in self-defense, now finding himself fighting for freedom. Where is the justice in that? There is no justice. You know, it's been suggested that the person that attacking Mr. Alba was not himself armed, and therefore Mr. Alba should not have used lethal defense, which effectively buried in such a provocative and ridiculous statement is the notion that Mr. Alba somehow should have accepted the beating, as if that beating could have potentially ended his life. And so for me, it's very clear. I want to thank everyone for coming out here. But again, this is not about politics. It's about Jose Alba, because if Jose Alba is not safe, then none of us are safe. So thank you so much. God bless you. I'm going to have two more people, and we're done. I'm going to have the gentleman, I promise, and then you, and then we're done. My name is not important, I'm not a politician, and I'll never ask for your vote, but I'm going to give it to you on the real here. Jose Alba is the victim in this situation, and they are coddling the criminal, the career, lifelong, long as my arm record criminal. And that has to stop. Kathy Hochul will not fire Alvin Bratt. And you people say, can't even talk politics. Well, politics is tied into law and order. She will not fire Alvin Bragg. She will not fire Eric Gonzalez from Brooklyn. They are rogue prosecutors who refuse to prosecute felonies. Now, I'm going to give it to you in Spanish a little bit. Mi gente, este es un crimen lo que está haciendo al señor Jose Alba. Él es la víctima y está tratando al señor Jose Alba como si fuera en el criminal. Y la mujer, la diabla de Kathy Hochul, nunca la va a echar al Alvin Bragg. Y es tiempo para una nueva generación de líderes políticos. Y aquí ustedes dicen que no se puede hablar de política. Pero yo te digo algo. Si ustedes electen a Kathy Hochul para seguir la misma cosa, hay que elegir al señor okay. Lee Sheldon y Alison Esposito. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Gracias hey, por hey, tener. Saludos, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Edwin de la Cruz. Yo soy uh, el fundador y actor ahora mismo de Cuba por el Northern Manhattan Republican Press Group. Y ahora mismo sucede que estamos aquí para eh, 
para entregarle el respeto al señor Alba. O sea, Alba, sucede que yo no conozco desde hace mucho tiempo, yo me crié con él cuando era muy pequeño. Es una persona honorable, muy buena familia, muy buen trabajador. Pero no voy a repetir lo, todo lo que han hecho. Ya, lo que han hecho. En realidad lo que hay que hacer simplemente es que él renuncie. El día de renuncie sabemos que él va a, a seguir con esta política a favor de los criminales. Pero también más importante, algo que no se ha mencionado aquí esta tarde, se llama Election Recall. We need election Recall. Election Recall es sacar a esos políticos que son malos políticos para que así saben que eh, puedan regresar políticos nuevos. Muchas gracias. So we're going to ask questions. No, we're going to ask questions now. Please, uh, any questions? I'm going to ask. Any questions? No questions from the press. Thank you.